taking full advantage of this bench back support. Oh my God, back support. I got lots and lots of time. I might as well enjoy the cabin. I'm not gonna see another one until uh, Kern River Cabin. And no in a row without rain. I'm gonna start being I'm gonna start getting accustomed to this. It is so nice to pack up a tent that is dry. I tell ya. Pack one up wet. <laughs> Kinda sucks. And you put this big nasty wet item in your bag and it's like an extra, another you know half pound of water, god knows whatever the hell it takes, but yeah. It's nice to have a dry tent. And uh yeah, I'm gonna keep going. I mean you have to toss it around your head a little bit just to make sure you're kind of doing right, but yeah, it's going to be a challenge. 12 more days of uh, toil on the body. It's going to be interesting. I'll take a picture of that. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Full jar. All right. Get off bug. Off to the grass. My, my God, my pack is so much heavier now. But it's a nine kilometer day, so. But, uh, apparently once I get up past the uh, intersection there for Rocky Pass, it's three crossings. Oh, got my hair wet this morning, trying to get some of the greasy, greasiness out of it. Well, that was nice to have company, you know. When you're talking about 16 days, loneliness, it's a thing. So that was four days. I have yet to, I'm not, I've yet to break my record of four and a half. I kind of think it'll happen on this trip, but at that time. I honestly thought I might not run into anyone until the night of, four, of the 14th day. That's when I hit the Brazo loop, so. Yeah, this morning we BS'd about hockey and you know, whatever, that sort of thing. My team is the Edmonton Oilers. Born and raised in Edmonton, so I'll always be. And uh, also some pretty good, you know. <laughs> yeah, God, God bless them. God love them. Big full jar of peanut butter. Full, right to the top, brand new jar. Uh, I got four scoops of that. I put two scoops in my in my uh, oatmeal and two scoops of my coffee is fantastic. It's quite the brew, man. One thing of that instant coffee that I buy and uh, one thing of hot chocolate and then two scoops of peanut butter. I mean, it has that greasiness that you're missing out here, right? Oh, oh, it was good. So I'll probably just skip having my soup today. I brought 12 for 16 days anyways, so. Oh man, I like feel full after all that peanut butter. But also, <laughs> I told them I was carrying one liter of water. They carried eight over Rocky Pass, eight. I've never even considered eight. I mean, this is not the desert. Uh, the most I've ever had is three. But, you know, no one comes out of the womb knowing how to do this. They decided they were gonna take five back in a Rocky Pass. at 16 pounds of water, of weight, just water. Oh my. Well, you know, everyone backpacks their own way, right? It's, uh, everyone develops their own thing. We all have our little foibles. I'm sure I have mine. <laughs> Guess I never mentioned it. Those guys were, yesterday they were trying to get to La Grace, La Grasse. And then they were going to go hike Karen Pass. 
and then they had to be out of here. So uh, they tried to go down to Lagrasse after Rocky Pass, and they didn't make it. They got stuck on one part, so they ended up coming back to stay uh, with me at Medicine Tent. And now today they were gonna, you know, they're asking about day hikes. I really couldn't figure anything out for them. I just said, you know, probably go back in Rocky Pass and try and scramble something. Well, they folded up their tents. So, you know, they'll go back in a Rocky Pass. Maybe they'll scramble around a bit, but they're going home. But yeah, some people do that. They just come in and head off to uh, Karen Pass, then go right back. Karen Pass is a pretty decent destination, so. Well, there's a bridge here, but I'm not sure I trust it in this condition. I go slipping off this thing, it's gonna ruin my day. Right? Uh, maybe I'll try it. I'll try a few steps. See how slick it is. Well, it's kind of a cool waterfall anyway. So, I started wandering out there and soon enough, the water came in and topped my boot a little bit, which is frustrating because they're just starting to get dry. So I took everything off and I even took off my pants. And uh, actually the water only came up to about there. It's hard to tell right there how deep it is. One good thing about this is now, you know, this might be an arm of the medicine tent. I don't think so though. But that definitely isn't. So, now the medicine tent is gonna be this much smaller. This is a bunch of water to take out of it. So, you know, there's positives. Patience, 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 patience. I could have fallen off that thing. And for what? So I can save 20 minutes? If I fall off, my whole pack's in the water, I'm soaked. A lot of things in my pack are soaked. My pack is, weighs another two pounds, it's full of water. And for what? Save 20 minutes, all right? Patience. I did that on my first day on the North Boundary Trail. I didn't want to take off my, change out my stuff. I tried to jump across something and it was stupid. So, yeah man, I gotta remind myself. It's much more open and scenic. Now that I'm past Medicine Tent, right? It's not just straight in the forest. The way it was up to a lot of rocky forks and some of the Climax Creek one. Well, I think this might be the part where the trail is washed out. I don't see anything over there. There's a cairn here. I think from watching uh, How's the Hike, I think it picks up up there. I think this trail has just been washed away. So I'll walk along there and climb up, see if it's up there. So there's a cairn there. There's one up there. And I think I see a big one up there. I'll follow cairns all the way up here. I still don't see a trail up here, so. Whatever it used to be, it must come back in down there. So just kind of start descending us and see what happens. Yeah, you come out over there, you climb all along this, up here, stay up here, down. And here's where the trail got eaten by the Medicine Tent River. And here's even a nice little marker. Well, this part is a little mucky, but trail is certainly in better shape. I think I might have already said that. Every so often it takes on the, uh, oh, I forget the name now. When you get all the bumps from the horses, but uh, you know, not too, too bad. I mean, this is a fur trail from 1830, so a lot of animals have made the way over this thing. Cool. Second warden cabin of the trip. I think I got nine in total. And this intent warden cabin. I actually found one of those unlocked once at uh, Willow Creek. This is something today. It is plus 27. 
Oh, I've been trying to keep my water intake high, but you know, nice little bench to hang out on. That's kind of cool. Just kind of look, have a look at the roofing. Ah, it's tin roofing. It's not, it's been there a little while. Yeah, cabin's in decent shape. Looks like uh, all this has gotten fresh paint, all that white. Of course, the view from this porch is pretty amazing. Wonder how many wardens have gone battling their way up into this. And there are places in these parks that wardens have been and no one else has. I mean, they're the only ones that can figure it out. They spend so much time out here. At least back in the old days they did. Well, because I'm a total slut for seeing everything, I'm gonna go down a little trail over here. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna cross the river and go check out uh, Medicine Tent Horse Campground. So Medicine Tent has lost a lot of water since I left the uh, hiker campground. Pretty easy crossing. I'm gonna leave my bag here. Got my boots, I tied it onto one of the straps just in case something tries to drag it away. Apparently the horse campground is only 80 meters in there, so go we'll check her out. Yeah, yeah. Not bad at all. Oh, nice view. Yeah, this guy, this bad boy is still getting used. I always wonder, sometimes you walk in somewhere and clearly hasn't had any love in a long time, but I can see fresh wood cut over there. Maybe the outfitters stay here sometimes. Sometimes you'll find stuff stashed, but as you can see in this can, all I got is a bunch of nails. Every so often you'll find like, just like a handsaw or an ax or something. Log toilet, it looks like that green thing is like an old stash of underwear or something. Uh, no use recently. There you go. The slut in me has been made happy. I've seen it, I've seen the campground. You wanna leave your uh, backpack hanging out by itself for too long. There's a chance, even though very slight. Oh. That'll come back and find something digging through it, but uh, yeah, I don't want to leave it too long. One thing I've been doing to combat the heat is I've been dunking this baseball cap into the water. I've already done it three times and I swear to God it's dry in half hour. Well, I'm taking full advantage of this bench back support. Oh my God, back support. I got lots and lots of time. I got just over five kilometers left of the grass. And as far as I know, there's nothing to see <laughs> between here and there. So I might as well enjoy the cabin. I'm not gonna see another one until uh, Karen River cabin apparently. Well, this is another one of the things I got from Stuart uh, from the How's the Hike video. Half a kilometer after the cabin, you come to a big creek, look left, and there's a cairn. I'm pretty sure I see two of them. So, perfect. That's a bit of a funny one. I didn't think you leave the park boundary until a short little section uh, just before the South Esk uh, river suspension bridge or that's not the South S River, but yeah, South S suspension bridge. I remember this <laughs> from uh, the video. It's a bridge from a bajillion years ago, which is now totally covered in like grass and moss and all kinds of stuff. Okay. A couple hundred meters by that old bridge. There's some old corduroy that's been torn up that was probably here and this guy
very hard to make out. Okay, so I figured out that it says bridge, and then on top it says like Dixon or something. And I tried to like turn it, but it's actually nailed onto the tree this way. Like, you think you could just push it up level, but no, it's actually nailed on there like that. It's kind of weird. And I look around for any creek names that, you know, Dixon or any such thing, and there isn't. I wonder where that could be from. And I mean, whatever that stuff was, crossing is long, long gone. Decided to take another route. Another one. This one's actually crossing something. It'd be cool if you could find a year on this, but it's really, really old, so. Oh, all right. Might as well actually use it instead of going through the muck. Oh, all right. One more, and there's some old parts from probably an old bridge, so the trail doesn't even go down here more. It goes up and around there, so there must be a way around now. Well, it's been quite an adjustment today to the big pack. You know, the brakes have got to come. They come faster, they last longer. I try to lie down. It's plus 27 today. It's only 10 kilometer a day, but... I mean, as I look at uh, more descriptions of this thing, I'm climbing about 700 feet today, and tomorrow it's another 10 kilometers, and I climb a thousand. But after that, the overall general elevation change is downward. Doesn't mean there's not going to be any climb. I'm sure there'll be a lot of up and downs, but still, until I get to Nigel Pass, which is the last day. So, two days. 700 feet today, 1,000 feet tomorrow, and then, uh, yeah. But yeah, I remember this from the North Boundary Trail. It's, uh, you just got to take rest, you got to take breaks, you got to relax, even if you're being hounded by mosquitoes, and believe me, I'm being hounded. I don't even know what the hell that was. It just looked like a black fly, and yet, you know, it looked like I didn't even feel it doing anything, but, uh, yeah. I killed it, but got a bunch of blood out of it. Sweet. Whatever, I'm sure I have several dozen bites at this point. But yeah, you just gotta sit here and put up with it. My body needs it. Well, I've been in the bush for a while and it's nice to get a view. Sweet. Well, I've been waiting for crossings all day long. Why do I feel like this is probably the biggest th thing I'm gonna find? Fantastic view from here. Oh. Awesome. Ah, oh, you won't let me get past the tree. Oh, maybe you can see from up there. All right. Rock hop the sky. Uh -huh. Come on. Ah, slippery. That's all right. I didn't get over top of my boots. That's all I care about. Sweet. Sweet. Ah, give me that sweet, sweet sign. Come on. Ah. No cool old white sign here. Woo! Ah. Okay. Got to work for the views a little bit, but they're there. What the heck happened here? Somebody just want to play with an ax? Weird, I can't figure out what the function of this thing was. <laughs> oh, look at this stump. Oh, that's kind of cool. Never seen a privy sign on a, a, yellow, a yellow square. Interesting. 
Stupid little things, interesting. There's a log over a hole. This one actually has toilet paper in it, so. Must be some people that regularly go to Karen Pass. Uh, maybe they did the South Pinery Trail too, who knows. The irony is that the last few campsites I've been at, not so much medicine tent, but have been in the trees and like no view. I would like to be out of the sun right now, right? It's like, it's so hot. It's so hot and there it is right in the sun with the view and everything. There's so many stumps here though. It's really cool. Like, look at them all. This is a great spot. To, I'm gonna set up a few stumps. Great spot to eat too. Great eating area. And what are you? Big, big pole, oh, yeah, huge nail. That ain't moving anywhere. Oh, uh, you know, yeah, it's okay here. Not bad at all. Oh, geez, and I just spotted the bear hang. It's just fine. Amazing how often you like, I literally will walk right underneath it and not know it's there. One thing about this site, like, uh, like Stuart said, it is right on the trail. Trail is bare central and there is pine beetle dead trees everywhere. Like it's hard to, you know, it's almost hard to find a place to not to park your tent where you're not sitting underneath a dead tree and all its branches, right? So just do the best you can. Uh, trail to the water source is it's only like 30, 40 meters. It's got a few branches coming into it. Water source could be moving a little faster, but it's still delivering like absolutely crystal clear water. So I like it. Works for me. Well, another day. Funny with this place, uh, there's bumblebees here. I haven't really seen them around much. And they're really attracted to salt. You know, I put out my socks, my shoes. Uh, I stood up my hiker poles. They're all, you know, I go over to grab them. There's like three or four bumblebees on them. They like the salt off my hands. And they're all over the socks and the shoes, all right? Salt, salt, salt. So the only thing is when, uh, you know, when one of them gets in here, you know, the tent, so one of them did, but the tent was still empty. So I was able to just kind of coax him, open the door wide and coax him out from the outside. And then, you know what, this got in. All right, it seemed like they went to bed as sunset came around. So, yeah. Stretched out. Uh, I've learned that one of the only enjoyable ways of stretching in the back country is to set up your tent and then just have nothing in it. So now, you know, you get in there, you kill whatever bugs are in there. Now they can't harass you and you're on a semi-clean floor, right? Your tent is still way cleaner than nature. So yeah, stretched out, trying to preserve the bod, lots more days. Tomorrow, Karen Pass. Good night.